Welcome back to The Bible is Art, where we explore the literary artistry of the Bible, and this week we're looking at why the chief priests buy a field with the money Judas gives back to them. This is what Matthew says. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Then, when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury since it's blood money. So they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me." Now this might seem like a strange text, like why talk about the chief priests buying a field with money from betraying Jesus? But this is the last of twelve fulfillment sayings in Matthew where something will happen, someone will do something, and then Matthew will say that it fulfills something from the Old Testament, and then he'll quote that Old Testament text. Now there's debate about precisely what text he's referring to. The three main candidates are Jeremiah 32, Jeremiah 18, and Zechariah 11. The wording is closest to Zechariah 11 verses 12 and 13, but Matthew says it's from Jeremiah. Now, it was a common rabbinic practice to put two texts together and attribute it to only one author. You can see this in Mark 1, where he combines Malachi 3 and Isaiah 40, and just says it's from Isaiah. It's just shorthand. Anyways, I think Matthew is referring to Jeremiah 32 and Zechariah 11, and it's really cool. And in this video, we're going to focus on Jeremiah 32. Let me show you. The big picture of this passage is that Judas gives back the money that he was given to betray Jesus, and the chief priests buy a field with it. That's it. Matthew tells us that it fulfills a similar situation in the Old Testament where someone buys a field, that is, Jeremiah 32. And what's going on there is that Jeremiah is supposed to buy a field while the siege of Jerusalem is happening. This is the end of Israel, and Jeremiah is told to buy property. Now that is strange. But there's a negative and positive side to this. Positively, if you buy property, that means you have some hope that you will have it after the city is destroyed. Negatively, this happened during the end of Israel. Israel is about to be exiled. So it's the end and the beginning. The end of Israel, but with property. So the same situation that happened in Jeremiah is happening now. It is the end of Israel, but also the beginning. The fullness of exile happens when Jesus dies, but it's also the beginning of a new Israel. Just as the purchase of the field happened during the demise of Israel, so it will be here. Matthew demonstrates how Jesus is a new Israel, doing the same actions of Israel. He was attacked as a baby boy, like the Israelite boys in the Exodus, baptized in the Jordan River, tempted in the wilderness, brought to the mountain, the Sermon on the Mount, and much, much more. The difference is that Jesus will not fail where Israel failed, but will take the punishment of Israel's failures, exile, on himself. But the purchase of the land is a foreshadowing that the death of exile is not the end. There will be earth on the other side. Notice another detail from Matthew. The field that is purchased is said to be the place to bury strangers and a field of blood. The money that was used to betray and ultimately kill Jesus was used to buy a field that is for the bodies of strangers. That is, the new land that is bought with the money from Jesus' betrayal to death. Jesus' enemies are unwittingly doing his work. 
Interestingly, the other place where field is thematically important is in Matthew 13, where it's used seven times in the parables about the kingdom. The field is the place where the treasure is buried. And here, in Matthew 27, the money for Jesus' death will purchase a field where there will also be treasure buried. Strangers. In the next chapter, after Jesus is resurrected, he will commission his disciples and tell them to go into the world and make disciples of all nations. That is, they are to dig up the treasure of people in the field of the world that has been bought by Jesus. And that, my friends, is why the Bible is art. Thank you everyone for checking out the video. Please, if you have any questions, you can leave them below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, it would be lovely if you could do so and uh, give it a thumbs up. It really does help. Um, if uh, you would like to support the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash the Bible is art um, and I will see you later. Thanks.